you can kind of see me in the reflection. The reflection will go away once the game starts, once it's brighter. But I'm going to do a little Let's Play of Silent Hill 1. Uh, I've been practicing with videos and filming and doing this type of a thing for a while. Um, I'm going to have to mess with the volume and the camera and try to get it as perfect as I can. Uh, but I'm recording this on a phone. I bought a little tripod. Uh, and I've always wanted to do something like this. I just never knew how to use capture cards or, um, that, how to do it on a computer. I don't really know. I don't really even have a computer anymore. We have a couple of laptops around the house, but really everybody just has phones now. Um, and I have a YouTube channel that I follow, which I recommend, and uh, it's called, it's a guy with a channel called My Retro Gaming Life, and he basically just shares videos that his father filmed on VHS when he was a kid in the late 80s and the early 90s. And he's got all these videos of him getting his first Nintendo or Atari or Sega Genesis and even going up to when he got his first Dreamcast and his first original Xbox. But it made me think that I think why people like Let's Plays is because you're just kind of sharing your life with them. And I play... Silent Hill 1 through 3, I play probably at least once a year. I'll play through the game. I'm kind of losing focus on the camera. But I play these games yearly, at least once. And they're so good, they're artistic, and there's I have such a nerdy knowledge of these games that I've always wanted to play and have people watch. I don't know if anyone's going to watch these or not. I'm really just sharing these for my family. And maybe they'll listen. But, yeah, I just wanted to share this. Because these games are an experience, and I've always wanted to kind of nerd out with these games. But, I am recording this on a phone. So we'll see how well this all holds up. I'm just trying to test the waters and see how this works. And now I'm just speaking into the open air. There's no recording equipment. Maybe if this really becomes a hobby of mine, I'll really get into it and I'll start buying all the good stuff. But for now, I am just going to try this. I'm just going to try it. Might as well try it. And I'm in a part of my life right now where I have some time to do this. So I want to do do Silent Hill 1 because right now Konami made a big boom. They announced they're going to remake Silent Hill 2. Uh, there's a new Silent Hill movie coming out by director Christoph Gans. Um, and there's even two other games. There's Silent Hill F and then there's Silent Hill Ascension, I think, which is the Dead by Daylight guys. Um... So yeah, I thought it'd be fun to kind of start the first game and maybe get into the lore. Um, I'm going to play it on normal. Resident Evil. That's our main character, Harry Mason. I think he's an author, and he was driving to Silent Hill because it's a lakeside resort town, and he was going to take his daughter Cheryl there for a vacation. I think Harry is a widower, if that's the right word. His wife died, so it's just him and his daughter. Where could Cheryl be? This place is a ghost town. I'm going to try to uh, 
adjust the volume as I play. Also, recording on my phone, uh, sometimes there's like some data problems, so I may have to do these in like 30 minute sections, do episodes. And right now it's day out. Uh, this would probably look a lot better if I played it in the dark, especially filming on a phone. So I might try to do this at night too. The problem for me is that I am an old man and I start getting sleepy around like eight o'clock, like nine or 10 o'clock. I'm thinking, man, I'm about ready for bed. So I'm not much of a night owl, but maybe I'm going to try it. There's, I got a couple of other horror games I want to play for you guys. One of them is called Blood Wash. I might do that tonight. Um, you know what? Real quick. Uh, ooh, that might look good. This is Harry's Jeep Wrangler that he crashed. He's wondering where his daughter's at. Interesting thing to note is that this is snow falling. Um, most people associate mist with Silent Hill. Foggy mist. And there is foggy mist, but there's also snow. And in, in, if you've only ever seen the movie, the 2006 Christoph Gans movie, you would think that Silent Hill is all about ash falling down to the ground. But uh, this isn't ash. This is snow. I think Harry says it somewhere in the game. He says it somewhere in the game. If you notice this, this is, a, this is something that looks like a 7-Eleven, but there's an 8 this game is full of pop culture references. Footsteps. So he won't go in there because he's concerned about his daughter. You really need to focus on finding your daughter in the beginning. This game looks great, though. PlayStation 1. These cutscenes look great. Takeyoshi Sato made all these cutscenes. Cheryl? Is that Cheryl? Man, I don't know why the, the camera's giving it a very blue hue. The game looks very Where are you going? blue to you guys. It's not that blue in real life. Hey, wait! Stop! So he sees his daughter run off into the mist, and you chase after her. But uh, yeah, Takeyoshi Sato is the guy that made all the cutscenes. Uh, the story is that he actually slept under his desk at Konami because he was the only one working on them, but that's how he wanted it because Konami told him, if you take anybody else under your wing, we're gonna, we're not gonna, I think it's either we're not gonna credit you or you you won't get the sole credit. And he thought that was bull because it's like, this is all my work. And I want to be credited for my work, so he said, "Well, then I'll do it all on my. I'll do it by myself." And I think it was just Silent Hill One that he did it all by himself. He lived at Konami while he finished those cutscenes. And I feel like I've always found it interesting to think about. I think those cutscenes were meant to. They were meant to. What's the word? They were meant to compete with the cutscenes of, like, Final Fantasy. Like, PlayStation 1 era, um, these, those types of cutscenes were really new, and everyone was amazed by them. They were like, wow, that looks so realistic. So, ooh, you heard a gate open and close somewhere? Um, so yeah, uh, like, Final Fantasy 7 and 8 and 9, and even games like Parasite Eve and Metal Gear Solid, they all had cutscenes that were blowing people away, and I feel like, you know, they were all competing, so 
When I watch the Silent Hill 1 cutscenes, I think about how it was kind of in competition with things like Final Fantasy. They were trying to blow people away. So Harry comes up to this gate, says, Beware of dog. This must be the gate that we just heard. Cheryl must have run through. Because it sounds the same. You hear the famous air raid siren that you get in the movie. You hear it in the distance. The cool thing about uh, survival horror games is the character will typically... You can walk up to something and press the action button and he'll give you his thoughts. So as you can see, there's this bloody pulp on the ground. So if I click A or X, it's, he just says, What the... What is this? And he walks over it. This would be a good time for me to explain the camera angles of survival horror video games. So, in most video games today, when you're playing a video game, the camera is literally, it's like this. Hold on, right here. The camera's right behind the, the character, and the whole game plays like this. Games like Dark Souls, uh, Zelda, even like the 3D Mario games, or games like God of War 4. It's over the shoulder, and when you press up, your character goes up. When you press down on the control pad, in like a God of War game, your character will actually turn around and run and move to the bottom of the screen. So, when you press up, your character goes up, and when you press down, your character goes down. But in survival horror, these games were coming out in the 90s before games like Halo and God of War were really like setting the control standards for video games. So, you know, back in the PS1 era or the N64 era, video games were like in a wild west state where people didn't really know how should, you know, we have this controller, how do we make people how do we make the character move? And it was really up to them. Whereas now You've had so many Halos and Call of Duties and God of Wars that it's like, if you don't make your game control like them, you're no one's really going to play your game. But in the 90s, PlayStation 1, it was the Wild West, and they came up with this idea called tank controls. And they work really well with Silent Hill because Silent Hill's camera is not behind the player. It's, it's fixed. It's not some floating camera that's always behind you. As you can see right now... I can back Harry into this corner, and the, and the camera's just far away from him. These survival horror games used camera angles like movies do. So, when I press forward, he's actually going to the bottom of the screen. Whereas, and this is called a 3D control scheme, whereas modern games use a 2D control scheme, because 2D is a lot easier. Also, uh, analog sticks became really popular, so Halo, Call of Duty, they all use analog sticks. But I've always found that survival horror is a lot better when you use the D-pad. Because you're, literally, you can turn your character with left and right, and he just rotates. And then you have like a propel button, which is the forward button, it propels him forward. And then you have a propel backwards. It's hard for people to get used to, but it's necessary for this type of a game because the cameras change. So like right now, I'm holding forward and the camera's gonna change, boom. I keep holding forward, he keeps walking forward. If, if this had a 2D control scheme, like God of War or Zelda or almost any game you play nowadays, you wouldn't hold forward. You would hold down because you want your character to go this way. But when you hold down with the Silent Hill control scheme, your guy just backs up into this wall. So it's different. If you don't play video games often and you don't understand tank controls, it's, it's always been an interesting thing to me. But they use tank controls so that I can just hold forward and always hold forward because the camera's going to go everywhere, especially with the scene we're about to do. This is a famous scene. Um, it 
it's early in the game because the developers were like, yeah, we're going to show you the best we can do. And this was included in the demo. There was a demo disc of Silent Hill, uh, and it sold the game. It was like, you know, we're going to show you what we can do. Silent Hill was blowing people's minds back in the day. And this camera angle that we're about to see was actually in the 2006 Christoph Gans movie. So Harry's walking. And watch this camera just go crazy. It goes up. It's watching him like a like something in the rafters is watching him. You know, it kind of gives you the creeps. And it, it kind of hides behind this little wall and peeks at him. And this was advanced for the late 90s. This blew people's minds. Real quick, I want to see... If I take the smoothing off, how that looks for you guys. I don't know if it helps or not. Because the image is looking really grainy. Again, this just isn't perfect. This is me on my phone. I could even make it full screen, but... The problem with full screen is that it kind of stretches the image a lot and it doesn't look quite the way you want it to. The original aspect ratio is how the game was meant to be seen. But maybe I'll try full screen for a little bit. Hear that air raid siren? It's getting darker. It's getting darker. Harry whips out a, a lighter. Better than nothing, I guess. Ooh, you know what? Oh, I'm, I'm wondering if I can adjust the brightness. That might help you guys. It's on three, we'll remember that. If I put it on like six, does it stay? It does. I don't know if that helped or not. The darkness, the dark spots of this game are going to be kind of tough because it would look a lot better if I was playing in the dark. Yeah, that's tough. I really don't know what to do. I don't think it really helped. We'll leave it at a three. Right now it's dark. You just need to know that. Harry's got a Zippo lighter probably. And he comes across a wheelchair with the wheel turning. In the Silent Hill games, you're going to see wheelchairs a lot. I'm guessing the developers just found them creepy. Uh, I don't know if there's any deeper meaning to the wheelchair. I think it's because most people have a fear of hospitals. And that's also why there's uh, like just about always a hospital in every Silent Hill that you get to go through. So people don't like hospitals. People don't like being injured. People don't like being disabled. But for me, it's creepy to think about because it's like, is someone crawling around on their knees in the darkness? It's kind of creepy. Some disabled you know, maimed person is wandering. So then you start seeing other weird things. Ooh, we're kind of losing focus. I'll try to keep an eye on that. Harry, what is this? What's this? Well, it, it looks like a gurney covered in blood, Harry. You also... Uh, I hope you guys can hear it. I got it. I'm trying to get it loud without me screaming over the volume. But that's a very industrial soundtrack. Akira Yamaoka, the musician, the soundtrack guy for these games, he was influenced by many different types of music. But uh, one was Nine Inch Nails. And that first album, I think it's called Pretty Hate Machine or Pretty Little Hate Machine by Nine Inch Nails. Uh, very industrial. Lots of clanging and metal. and It goes with the theme. Because when people think of Silent Hill, at least Silent Hill 1, 
you think of blood and rust and what do we got right here we got blood on the floor and we got rusty gates and we're gonna come across another scene here in a minute that was in the movie Music's getting intense. There's chunks of something on the floor. What is this? Boom, what is that? What's going on here? Some sort of a mangled corpse. Oh, and we're being attacked. We're being attacked. We're being attacked by strange little things. I'm gonna just run. Oh, there's more of them. I'm just running. I'm just gonna go as far as I can. Is this blocked by a fence? Well, this is how we came in. Oh no! Oh no, I'm being attacked! Oh no, I died. Oh no. He died. No, he didn't. He wakes up in a diner with a young police officer. Was I dreaming? How do you feel? I've been run over by a truck, but I'm all right, I guess. Glad to hear it. Knock the camera a bit. You from around here? Why don't you tell me what happened? Wait a second, I'm just a tourist. Just a tourist? I came here for a vacation. I just got here. I don't know what happened. to find out myself. Uh -huh. Have you seen a little girl? Seven Just years old. Seven last month. Short, black hair. Cheryl. My daughter. Cheryl Mason. Sorry. The only person I've seen in this town is you. Where is everybody? you if I knew, believe me. Ghost town. But from what I can tell, something bizarre is going on. That's all I know. Hmm. What's your name? Harry. Harry Mason. Sybil Bennett. Police officer from Brams, the next town over. The phones are all dead, and the radio too. I'm going back to call in some reinforcements. Better call an army. Hmm. Hold it. Where do you think you're going? My daughter. I've got to find her. No way. case, I need to find her now. Cheryl's my little girl. I can't just leave her out there by herself. Have you got a gun? <laughs> um, no. Crazy right here. Sybil gives him her gun. Use it. Now listen to me. Before you pull the trigger, know who you're shooting. And don't do it unless you have to. And don't go blasting me by mistake. Got it? I got it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I won't shoot you. I swear I won't shoot you. You do best to stay nearby. I'll be back with help as quick as I can. 
All right. So yeah, Harry wakes up in a a uh, a diner of sorts, and uh, Sybil Bennett, a cop from a local town or a town that's close to Silent Hill called Brahms. I I forget why she's here exactly. She might have just said, but I think she got lost in the fog too and there's no one here and she doesn't know what's going on she can't find her way out of town so um right now we're at the 25 minute mark uh when i hit the 30 minute mark i may start another video or i may end this video because i want to do these in 30 minute intervals in case problems arise i've already had a couple of hiccups oh you guys also might hear ba baxter barking but uh, this game, Silent Hill 1, was, in, was hugely influenced by pop culture. The music that was just playing really reminds me of, like, Twin Peaks. And the Silent Hill guys were inspired by Twin Peaks. Uh, Twin Peaks allowed these Japanese directors and developers to see what an American town is like. Specifically a uh, kind of a small-time American town. Or a, a small, rural American town which is basically what Silent Hill is. Silent Hill is also based off of kind of Maine because that's where uh, Stephen King is from. And a lot of Stephen King books are written in Maine or they take place in Maine or kind of like Northeast America. And uh, yeah, novels, silent, uh, Stephen King novels were huge influences to Silent Hill. Now there's so much lore to drop. There's so many influences. I'm going to try to take them as they come, because I could just stand here forever with Harry just looking at you and just ranting. And I don't want to do that. I want to keep moving. I want to try to get this done. This game, I could probably beat this game in like six hours or so if I just keep moving. Over here is a health drink. And a knife. Uh, little warning... When I play Silent Hill games, unless I'm playing on hard and I'm trying to conserve ammo, I don't bother with knives. You just want to use the gun. The games almost always give you plenty of ammo. Oh, we're losing focus. This is the, uh, the pause screen. You'll see your character in the upper left corner. The green uh, light means you're healthy. Uh, if it's red or orange, it means you're hurt. Also interesting... The uh, controller will vibrate. It's It'll vibrate just so softly if you're hurt. So over here, I was I tried recording this a little bit ago and I missed it. It's such an easy thing to miss, but I, now I can play it out for you guys. When you walk over here, the camera's going to change and it's going to show us something. Keep an eye behind Harry. Oh, wait, I think I need to pick these items up first. So there's a health item, a health drink, a flashlight, and a map. A, the residential map of the residential area of Silent Hill. Yes, I'll take that. Right behind me. Now, I, when I move, the camera's going to change. But there, usually players would have already... Oh. No. No. Oh, no. I missed it. Oh, did it just happen? Oh, no. Why would you do that? I think I took my time. Ah. Oh. Ah. Man, it happened again. Or maybe it's random. If... Okay, I don't know. Maybe if I would have moved quicker. Maybe the game knew. It's like, oh, we see what you're doing. You're trying to show everybody. Usually, most people, when that camera angle happens, they press a button, and they back up a little bit, and then something flutters right past those these windows over here. And, you know, you catch it just a glimpse. What was that? Something fleshy. Looks like it just flew past the window. What the heck? But we missed it. I missed it the first time, and I missed it the second time. Damn it. Uh, well, 
I'm getting to a 30 minute mark. I may I may stop the video and restart. Yeah, I'm going to stop and restart. Here we go.